Hi, it's Brother Charles from Reviewer's Revival. If you're a fan of ham and tone wheel organs, you will definitely want to stay tuned in. Today, up on the Reviewer's Bench, we're taking a look at the Gospel Drawbar's contact library that has recently been released by the good folks over at Precision Sound. We will check out how well it stands on its own, but we will also take this opportunity to have a good listen to the LX122 Premium by Zilds Lab. I had reviewed the LX122 here on Reviewer's Revival some time ago. To check that review out, simply type in LX122 into the search box, hit enter, and you'll find it right away. Gospel Drawbars is a contact sample library set that Precision Sound have meticulously recorded in 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, of a 1937 Hammond AB organ. Now, before you question what exactly that is, the Hammond AB is the precursor to the famous Hammond B3 organ. The Hammond AB organs were manufactured by Hammond Corporation between the years of 1935 and 1938. Although they look very similar to their later cousins, the Hammond B3 organs, these instruments were actually the original Hammond A electronic circuitry and mechanical makeup housed within a furniture cabinet that we come to know and love as the Hammond B3 a few years later. These organs did not feature a vibrato nor percussion circuitry. They did have a tremolo circuitry which provided an amplitude modulation. Now that we've had a brief history lesson about the old Hammond AB organ, let's find out what features Precision Sound have included in this contact sample set of this fabulous old instrument. The first tab on the Gospel Drawbars interface is the Drawbars tab. Here we can select Split Mode or Stack Mode. When the instrument is configured in split mode, we have a split point, in this case, C3. The lower register is represented by draw bars 1, and you have a range of pre-configured selections. Each slot also has independent volume and tune controls. Slot 2 would represent the upper keyboard on a dual keyboard Hammond organ. Right now you're looking at a pre-configured setup that I've already saved under the name Gospel Drawbars. What I'd like to do is cycle this MIDI sample that I've already pre-recorded using Gospel Drawbars and we'll cycle through the various sounds available to us. Let's disable slot 2 and listen just to the left hand. Again, I like the one that I started out with. Now let's listen to the right hand and we'll turn on slot 2. You can also change the octave range, which makes a lot of sense in this case. So there you've heard the keyboard in split mode. Moving along, 
let's set it back to the settings that I had configured when the video first started. We'll go into stack mode. Let's give this a listen. Oh, there we go. There's that nice, big, thick, bluesy, Jimmy Smith-ish kind of sound. I also really like this setting. This sound works particularly well for gospel because you have your nice high-end crisp sheen and yet you retain that nice meaty middle section. It is too bright for some styles of music, such as the one that's playing. We'll go back to the original setting that I had pre-configured. And that's the Drawbars tab. The Dynamics panel is where we have control over Envelope Attack, NDK, Release Levels, Bass Mix, and Velocity. Now the Velocity control is a great aid in compensating for the velocity output of your MIDI controller. If your keyboard puts out a very strong velocity, then this helps you compensate for that. I know with my own keyboard, a Roland E50, the velocity layers tend to be very temperamental. It either is very loud and abrupt, or it's too soft and gentle. Now since the original Hammond AB organ did not include the percussion circuitry that we are accustomed to seeing in a B3, a C3, an A100, etc., the good folks at Precision Sound have given us envelope controls. The default 1 millisecond of attack time and a decay of relatively short 9.4 millisecond release gives us a pretty nice facsimile of the percussive effect. If I increase the attack and decay, we'll have a softer sound. I'll adjust these back to their defaults. The release levels is interesting. At its default level of minus 12 dB, take a careful listen to the keys as they are released. While the keys are released, we hear just a little bit of the original Leslie cabinet sound, a small bit of, of room ambience as well as the sound of the tone wheels being disengaged, for lack of a better word. If I increase this up to approximately 12 o'clock, you'll hear that the sound is quite a lot more abrupt. Da -ra, da -ra. If we put it up more than that, it actually becomes unusable. While I've been playing around with the sample library, I actually found that a setting of approximately minus 18 dB is good. We can try and increase that a little bit. The bass mix allows you to mix in the amount of bass pedal volume into slots 1 and 2. Remember over here in the drawbars panel we see slots 1 and 2. The bass mix allows you to mix in how much of the bass pedal volume that you want. Now whether you have a bass pedal module hooked up through MIDI into your system matters not. Between the keys of C0 and B1, you only hear bass pedals. This is not actually part of either upper or lower manuals on the Hammond organ. This represents, this key range between C0 and B1 represent only the bass pedals. Now let's go over to the tone panel. Here you can see that we have basic control over low, mid, high frequencies, as well as stereo width, which is adjustable between mono, 
all the way up to 100% width, rotator on or off, as well as rotator speed from slow to fast. Because Precision Sound recorded this old Hammond AB organ in a stereo configuration, miking the original Leslie cabinet set in slow speed at varying distances, they recommend that we keep the stereo width knob set to mono if we're using the rotator. I'll turn the rotator off, set the stereo width up to 100%, and you will hear that there's a lovely, rich, almost a flanging-like quality, I guess they would call it the choral effect, of the Hammond organ through a Leslie. Let's set that now to mono, engage the rotator, and take a listen. We'll turn the rotator on to fast speed. For anyone who doesn't own a third-party plug-in to emulate a Leslie cabinet such as the Zilds Lab LX122 or the LX122 Premium as we're using here today, Native Instruments built-in rotator effect actually does a pretty decent job, especially within a live environment or if you were recording backing organ tracks that don't require a really good true-to-form sound. Now let's take a listen to the rotary effect being changed in real time via the modulation wheel. As you can hear, it's pretty even tempered. It is adjustable. We can set the speed, the acceleration speed of the rotator, as well as its rotational speed. We can't adjust things such as inertia, like we can with the fabulous LX122, and neither do we get a really nice room simulation. Nevertheless, if you need a rotator effect for your Hammond organ, it's nice to know that without buying any additional plugins or any other future expenditures, or without the overhead on your CPU of using yet another plugin, that there is one included and built into this sample library set, courtesy, of course, Native Instruments Contact 5. Over in the effects section, we have reverb control and delay control. Looking at the reverb, we see that there is the level and also the reverb type. This contact sample library set includes impulse responses from the Briscotti M7 collection by Acousticas. One of my favorites is the Rusty Spring. Let's crank that up a little bit so you can hear it even better. Isn't that nice? <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Hey, let's edit that part out. Okay. Take this back to its default value. That, that default value is actually pretty high. We'll take that down to something reasonable. I think I had it set to approximately minus 28. Okay, let's turn that one off, find out what the delay is all about. One of my favorite chords to play in a Hammond organ, ninth. Add your two, add your seven, come up with a ninth, perfect. I'll increase the level of this. 
that's actually pretty nice. I could see a person getting some interesting groove going with that. So we have our level control, time, tone, feedback amount, as well as stereo spread. Finally, the last tab, good old credits, and it shows us that it was recorded by Daniel Nystrom and Lars Weston, founders and maintainers of Precision Sound, sound editing, good old Lars Weston, contact scripting by Ian Moreland, GUI graphics by Lars Weston, Copyright Precision Sound 2012. This is the Gospel Draw Bars Contact Sample Library set by Precision Sound. I'm Brother Charles of Reviewers Revival and thank you for joining me. Come back and watch more videos and enjoy the reviews. By the way, I mentioned a little while ago that we could adjust more rotary options than those that are immediately visible on the tone panel screen. So if you click on the little wrench icon, this brings up the instrument edit mode. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see that the third row from the bottom of this screen and third one in is the rot, rot, rat, rotary. We'll call it the rotary control. I keep the acceleration at approximately one-third. I found that keeping acceleration at the 33% mark, give or take, gives the most authentic emulation of a real Hammond hooked up to a real Leslie in a real blues band situation or in a real church. Balance is adjustable between woofer and horn. Again, I find the default value of 50%. Well, just right. Distance is adjustable, so the sound of how close or how far you are away from the Leslie cabinet. By default, 0% wetness is what this has been configured with, but because the old Hammond AB organ was recorded in stereo mode with its original Leslie cabinet in slow rotation, Setting this wet knob all the way up to zero resulted in some strange, warbly, flanging-like, almost phase cancellation-y sort of effect. So for me personally, as a real Hammond player, I think that it's a better blend if we decrease this to approximately minus 6 dB. Of course, that's just this reviewer's opinion. Keeping the output volume at approximately minus 5 dB will prevent overload too much up here and the signal. Let's give this a listen. There you have it. Gospel Draw Bars by Precision Sound. I'm Brother Charles of Reviewers Revival. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for more of my videos and be sure to visit us at www.reviewrevival.ca for more great reviews of the software that you like to know more about. Reviewers Revival is all about supporting and promoting independent software developers and yes, it's all about supporting and providing good informative resources for you my faithful viewers, thanks and God bless. Oh, yeah.